There you, there you go. Sorry, I haven't used Skype in, uh, I don't know, years. Okay, well, welcome to Skype land. And thank you so much, Adam, for joining us. Is it Scavone? Is that how I say your last name? Scavone. Scavone. Okay, Adam Scavone. And I've got your site up here as taxmarijuanany.org. Yeah, that's okay. the website for uh, New York Cannabis Alliance, my, my organization. Okay, so I wanted to talk to you because, um, and we've got our commentator Lorraine on the line who just every once in a while asks questions or comments from the 40,000 point view. And ladies and gentlemen, you can call in 212-757-1541. But there's a very interesting story this week, okay, if you haven't been paying attention. You know, marijuana laws have been relaxing around our area. We've done a couple of interviews with folks from Normal. You know, first there was New Jersey, and then there was, again, a couple, I guess, months ago or maybe weeks ago, the decriminal, I guess, for medical use in New York State, which you can even use a vaporizer, apparently. But now uh, there's this news that after months of resistance from the New York Police Department, Brooklyn District Attorney's Office announced on Tuesday, that was yesterday, that it would immediately carry out its plan to stop prosecuting low-level marijuana cases. So, Adam, could you talk to us a little bit about what that means? Is this, is this, is this the beginning of decrimin decriminalization? All right, so yeah, there's a lot of uh, material packed in here, but uh, it's not the beginning of decriminalization. Let me start at the end. It's not the beginning of decriminalization. New York decriminalized marijuana in 1977. And when we talk about decriminalization, it, it means the removal of criminal penalties. Uh, in New York, those are misdemeanors and those are felonies. Under penal law, uh, Article 221, uh, under Section 221.05, uh, marijuana possession of less than an ounce uh, that's not burning or open pu to public view is a violation, kind of like a, a parking ticket or something like that. A summons, yeah. A yeah. summons, you know. Yep. Um, so uh, uh, a lot, we make 28,000 marijuana arrests in New York City every year. Uh, uh, and this is all predicated on people, uh, 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 in theory, the the police, there's the story they say is that these people expose their marijuana to public view. In reality, it's because the police tell them to expose it to public view. It comes into public view. Ray Kelly said a couple of years ago to stop doing that. Uh, uh, Chief Bratton says he uh, is uh, also he hasn't backed away from that policy anyway. Um, but uh, after an initial decline in the uh, marijuana arrest from a high of about 50,000, we got down to 28,000. Uh, but still, we have 28,000 people a year, uh, I guess, walking around New York, uh, waving their marijuana around for the police. Okay, so let uh, me ask you something, though, Adam. Well, funny to me. Let me ask you something because that's related to the stop and frisk. We did we did like eight, eight shows on stop and frisk actually, and <clears throat> you know it's really stop, question, and frisk. And part of that was getting them to pull the marijuana out of the pocket so then they could arrest them. H hasn't that gone away though, or do they still do that? Uh, I, I don't, uh, I, you know, I haven't been hanging out in criminal court lately, um, uh, so I don't know what's going on on the ground, but uh, 28,000 people uh, a year uh, walking around with uh, marijuana, you know, uh, just on ready display, um, I think that's, uh, that, that's questionable. Uh, I, it, you know, I don't care where you live, you don't want to go to jail for the night. Nobody does. Okay, so tell me, what's going on in, in, in Brooklyn, then, with the district attorney and the, and the kind of the struggle between the police department and, and, and the district attorney's office and how they're going to administer that across New York? And is that going to happen in New York City, in, in Manhattan? Yeah, so, uh, so the district attorney, Ken Thompson, ran on a campaign promise of, of ending uh, marijuana arrests for small-time offenses in in Brooklyn. Uh, he was going to use prosecutorial discretion to enforce the, uh, if not, uh, uh, because of this ambiguity, whether or not the police are telling the people to bring it out of their pocket, um, it just doesn't make sense to have that many people wrapped up in the criminal justice system. From his point of view, it's an expense. He has to staff paralegals, he has to uh, coordinate to type up the complaints with the uh, early complaint assessment bureau within the DA's office. And they handled about 8,300 of these last year, I believe, according to his memo. Um, 8,300 is, uh, you know, 24 of these a day. If they take an hour to deal with each, you have to ha have them typed up by a paralegal, dealt with in court by uh, an assistant district attorney, a judge, a court clerk. Uh, uh, usually the defendant is represented by the Legal Aid Society. Uh, that's, uh, you know, five, six, seven people tied up on each of these cases with 28,000 of them a year, 8,000 in Brooklyn alone. Uh, he stands the uh, potential to see real savings while maintaining the priorities that he laid out, including keeping people uh, uh, from smoking in, in parks and uh, playground, near playgrounds and 
uh, in other sensitive areas. It was, uh, I think it was a reasonable compromise. Uh, Chief Bratton said that the Brooklyn cops, uh, they, the NYPD officers in Brooklyn won't uh, enforce the law differently than their counterparts elsewhere. And that makes sense as a citywide agency that they wouldn't, uh, that, that, that they wouldn't necessarily follow Chief Bratton's lead. They answer to Mayor de Blasio. Uh, Chief Bratton answers to the mayor. Uh, Ken Thompson is elected, duly elected on his own as uh, District Attorney of Kings County. And uh, so he's using his power, his prosecutorial discretion uh, to achieve fairness uh, in a law that we've seen uh, very much disproportionately enforced against minorities. Uh, well, that, 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 was gonna, that was gonna, that was going to be my next question, Adam, is that I mentioned this to someone today. I said, hey, look, it looks like you can you know, maybe smoke weed in Brooklyn. He goes, look, I'm white. I can do that already. And is that, is, 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 is that why it's more apt to loosen up in Brooklyn more than perhaps Manhattan and Harlem? Is that, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think you just have a progressive uh, district attorney. Uh, that campaign was all about change uh, after uh, district attorney uh, 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 Hines' tenure. Um, I just think it was uh, kind of uh, uh, Brooklyn was in the right place at the right moment, and it was a winning campaign theme. Do you think it's going to happen in Manhattan? Uh, do I think uh, the uh, Cy Vance is going to go for this? Uh, I, you know, I don't. I, I wouldn't speculate. Um, he, 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 he should. Okay, so to me though, I just want to kind of wrap this up and I really thank you for your time and I know you, you've got a lot of experience, you're on the Bar Association, on the committee for um, all of this and very knowledgeable. Do you think within five years this is going to just keep rolling out so that it's more um, taxable? I mean, like your site says, tax marijuana NY. I mean, in the end, these states that are doing that are making money and it, it, it regulates it and it gets it under control, it gets the crime away. I mean, after a while, doesn't it make sense and the momentum can't stop and the conclusion is that it becomes legal? Uh, I think so. I think a lot of this, uh, first of all, has to do with the demographic shift. Uh, young people are frustrated with the old approach. Uh, it's uh, common knowledge that, that, that the things they teach in dare classes and uh, other scare tactics that, that, that schools and others use uh, on young people are backfiring. Uh, they, and that a sensible, rational approach that works for everybody uh, works best. Uh, in Netherlands, they separate the cannabis market from other drug markets and as a result, Dutch teens, even though cannabis is regularly readily available, first of all, they use cannabis at rates that half of those of American teens. And uh, on top of that, they don't go on to use hard drugs because the uh, people they're buying the marijuana from are not trying to upsell them to ecstasy, cocaine, and whatever else. Uh, I think it's sensible policy. I think uh, uh, we stand the potential to raise uh, a, a substantial amount of tax revenue to fund more important priorities. I think it. Uh, I think we're going to make tremendous strides in terms of fairness. Um, so many people are young people, especially, are saddled with criminal records and convictions. Uh, open cases. The New York court system is notorious for uh, for uh, not, and it's not any uh, out of any uh, um, even incompetence or anything else. They're dealing with a huge caseload. Uh, but errors are common. Uh, I worked in a small law firm that uh, devoted a substantial portion of its practice to. To, uh, to correcting errors in uh, adolescence division of criminal justice services rap sheets that, are, uh, that, that get printed out uh, when they're arrested, but also get checked when, they're, when they go to apply for jobs and, want, uh, wow, and they man. need to do a background check. Uh, it's a huge problem, and uh, there's a better way, a fairer way, and, uh, and we, uh, we won't stop working until we have a comprehensive new approach to cannabis policy for the state of New York. Okay, let me ask you, do we have a caller on the line? Caller, you're on the air. Can you, hear me? can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. What's your question or well, comment? Well, actually, it's a comment. I'll make it very brief because of the time. Is that um, by decriminalizing marijuana, it's not going to get the criminal element out of it because you have the legalization of the sale of designer bags, and yet you can buy uh, counterfeit bags at a cheaper price. So as the government charges you one price, just like with cigarettes, you can buy cigarettes illegally on the black market. Um, as for the Netherlands, the Netherlands actually pulled back considerably on their lenient drug laws because of the chaos that created was created. Unfortunately, with any kind of drugs, when you legalize them, 
what happens is then everyone is forced to do drugs because then people have to go out and they have to support those who say, you know what, I'm too high now to work, I can't do it. And it does lead to bigger drugs. What they should decriminalize is prostitution. And I'll, let me explain to you the difference. <laughs> With any kind of drugs that are illegal, that you cannot buy over the counter, you must be a licensed physician or pharmacist in order to manufacture or distribute them. Whereas you can have all the illicit sex in the world you want, but the moment you take anything for it, then it's a crime. And that's because the government can't tax it. We need less government, not more. We don't need the government to say, okay. we'll legalize it only if we get what we, all that we want out of it. Okay, love. Thank you so much for Thank calling you. for your points. Okay. Thank you. Wow, you got a response to that, Adam? Uh, well, the uh, thing about the designer bags, uh, that's, uh, that's outright intellectual property theft. Uh, the, the part about uh, 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 cannabis users ending up on the welfare rolls, I don't know who exactly she's talking about. Uh, Peter Lewis uh, was the chairman and founder of Progressive Insurance, uh, 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 quite a successful company, and there's uh, a lot of people like him. Uh, they're brilliant and uh, extremely productive cannabis users cannabis users run the gamut of society and uh, I, I just uh, I, I, I'm offended by the uh, by, by dragging cannabis users through the mud and uh, just uh, it just slurring uh, slurring my friends family members uh, and uh, you know people close to me who are outstanding people productive members of society it's nonsense okay. Adam, we recommend people go to your site, taxmarijuanany.org. Real quick, in 10 seconds, how much money could New York State make if they taxed marijuana? I did the back of the envelope calculations on this uh, using the projected production and sales figures that they, the Washington State Liquor Control Board uh, put out uh, through their consultant, Mark Kleiman, uh, 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 UCLA uh, uh, researcher, professor, uh, who's doing their consulting. Um, he calculated the total number of grams that they would sell in the first uh, year or so. Um, I don't remember what that number was. It was you know in the millions of grams. But uh, all in all, the back of the envelope calculation yielded about eight hundred and fifty million dollars a year uh, uh, using the structure of the taxes set up in the Marijuana Regulation and Taxation Act uh, introduced by Senator Liz Krueger and Assembly Member uh, Crystal Peoples Stokes. Uh, that's currently pending in the uh, New York State Senate and Assembly. Adam, thank you so much for your concise and beautiful answer. Folks, go to taxmarijuanany.org for more information. Adam, we're going to let you go as we're getting close to the show. We've got to do the weather real quick, all right? Thanks, Tony. It's been great. I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us.